All right, guys, in this episode, Frank Proctor, Way the Gun, is going to talk about how to mitigate recoil. Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome back to Trigger Time TV. We've got uh, the first of a two part uh, series here on controlling recoil. I get asked that question quite a bit from people watching videos and stuff like that. It's like, hey, what are you doing to control recoil? Well, one thing I'm doing is not fighting it. We'll jump, we'll jump into that more on the, uh, on the next episode. Let's start with other hands. It's, you know, it's typically out there, and you know, it's, it's always got to be your grip that helps you control recoil. Not necessarily. You know, there's a lot of other stuff in play, but what we're doing with our hands can help. All right, so we're going to start talking about a thing I call a parallel grip. Uh, it's typically out there a lot to, hey, we need to get a thumbs forward high grip on the pistol. Well, there's some things that we'll end up doing there that, you know, from a textbook standpoint, look like a thumbs forward high grip on the pistol, but you're not getting everything you need and you can cause yourself some problems, okay? So here's uh, maybe what we could look at seeing, you know, hey, this is a, a thumbs forward high grip on the pistol. From the outside, that doesn't look too bad. But let's start breaking that thing down and analyzing it and you should, or analyzing it, and you should do some of that for yourself. See if you're getting everything you can get. All right, so if you take a look, first of all, at the firing hand, okay? You see that little bit of air between the, the back strap of this pistol and the web of my hand. That's a good indicator that I'm not getting all the leverage I could get, okay? Um, I call it a parallel grip because I think we should be striving to get our hands, both of them, as close as we can to parallel to the slide because that's where we're, the, the problem is, right? With a slide reciprocating, moving around, that's where all of our, our um, resistance is coming from. So if we can get all the leverage we can, you can see that that's much more leverage. We flip to the other side there and you can see that that hand is a lot closer to parallel there, right? And another indicator that is that there's no air between the web of my hand and the back strap of the pistol. And I've got a little bit of skin pressed up around the back strap of it, right? So I got tons of leverage on it and a nice vicing kind of effect there. Okay. Now let's talk about some other things that can happen on the support hand side that can cause problems. Probably quite a few of you have shot your pistol and the gun ran out of, or ran out of ammo and you didn't get a slide lock, okay? A lot of times we'll try to blame that on the, on the, uh, on the gun or the magazine or something. It's generally you. Okay. If we have our support hand kind of low on the pistol and we start stacking our firing hand thumb on top of it, you can see where my firing hand thumb is living at right now, right? If it's touching the, mag or the uh, slide release, even ever so slightly, just a little bit, you can keep that thing from locking back on an empty magazine. Right? And that, that causes some problems. It adds a little more delay into getting the gun reloaded and back into operation, okay? So, and then there's another problem that can happen if the support hand is a little too low on the pistol. You see that thumb sitting there on the, on the uh, slide of the pistol? If we get a little tension going, like we will sometimes when we're, we're shooting, uh, or if we've got gloves on, we can slow that slide down enough to either keep it from cycling at all or slowing it down on the cycling and causing some malfunctions there. So let's go ahead and rotate that hand up and get it a little closer to parallel to the slide there. And we got a lot better, we're in a better place in life there. All right, with that hand nice and high like so-ish, the firing hand thumb's not sitting down on the slide stop. So that's gonna help. We can also get a little bit of work out of this thumb. We can push back into the frame of the pistol to counter the bad things that we may be doing with our trigger finger and put movement into the gun. So that's gonna help. Then we can press down with a firing hand thumb to kind of help us control how much the gun lifts and help it return back to the target faster to give us side alignment again faster, okay? Um, what other things can we get out of this? Talked about that. Oh, um, do want to make sure we got the heels of our hands back together. If we get all that leverage, but we don't have any traction to make it stick, that doesn't help us either. So let's pull the heels of the hands back together and a good firm grip from both hands. You know, it's out there a lot that, you know, your support hands only doing, or the support hands doing most of the work on recoil control. It's not well equipped. If you take a look right there, you know, the movement's happening when the slide comes back to the rear, your firing hand, the web of your firing hand is back behind that pistol. If you look and see how your um, support hand is on the pistol, there's nothing back there. So it's not really equipped to help you control that pistol. All right, folks, there's a little stuff on the parallel grip. Hope that helps you. And we'll look into that next series and get some more work out of recoil control.